Former Nationals Minister has set up another showdown over coal-fired power in the coalition as the party room prepares to meet here in Canberra. Political reporter Eliza Edwards is in Parliament House with us. Eliza, internal tensions flaring again. Yeah, that's right. Liberal and National MPs arrived about half an hour ago for their joint coalition party room meeting. There could be plenty of fireworks happening inside now as there were last week over the future of the coal industry. Some Nationals MPs want the government to underwrite a new coal-fired power station in Queensland, something that's the, study, that's the subject of a $4 million feasibility study, whereas moderate Liberals, on the other hand, don't believe that's the right way to go. National Senator Matt Canavan hitting out at inner-city Liberals uh, for their views, arguing that they should try and air those views in North Queensland. Finally, I welcome people having different views. Some of my colleagues or, or others uh, want to have a different view uh, to mine. Uh, that's, their, that's their right, and I respect that. Uh, I just hope they'd consider at the next election uh, coming up to Collinsville uh, with a convoy, perhaps, of cars and, and vehicles uh, and holding a rally there to protest against the, the coal-fired power station there, particularly if they live south of the border, down in Sydney, Melbourne, maybe Tasmania. Please come up to North Queensland and tell us all how we're immoral and corrupt. It would help us a lot. So Matt Canavan really highlighting the division there between Queensland and inner city electorates. Labor, though, not immune to that division over coal either. The opposition leader has stated very clearly his intention to not approve a new coal mine if he was Prime Minister. And he's also hit out at the Nationals MPs for pre-empting this feasibility study on the Collinsville project. They're not just climate sceptics, they're market sceptics. And what we see with this $4 million... Uh, subsidy as taxpayers right throughout Australia, including in regional Australia, paying for something. Four million dollars is a lot of money for a feasibility study. I've been the infrastructure minister. That is an extraordinary amount of money. That is four million dollars of hush money for the climate change deniers in the coalition. Eliza, some Nationals MPs not hiding their disappointment that colleagues did side with Lou O'Brien and Labor, of course. Yeah, that's right. The Nationals defector, Lou O'Brien, was catapulted into the role of Deputy Speaker thanks to some Nationals MPs siding with Labor on this. And one person who backed Michael McCormack in last week's leadership spill is very disappointed that this is where things have landed. Oh, look, I am very disappointed that that happened. Um, you know, colleagues have voted with Labor, so it is um, disappointing, but it's a democracy and, uh, you know, Lou's now the uh, Deputy Speaker, so we will all work with that. Um, I just want us to get on with the job. Is Michael McCormack's job safe? I believe so, yes. Thank you. Well, one of his detractors, Michael McCormack's detractors, has foreshadowed the possibility of other MPs defecting from the Nationals Party and has urged Michael McCormack to unite the team. It's good for footy teams sometimes to have a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart and get up and tell people every, you know, what they think of each other and, and you can get on with it after that. Now, now we've had Lou leave us, which is, which is sad, but you know, I hope Michael now just focuses on uniting everybody, bringing people together. We don't want to lose any more and, uh, and we, we, we've got a job to do. But while Lou O'Brien isn't sitting in the Nationals party room anymore, he is still in the joint coalition party room. It could be quite a fiery meeting and we'll hear the results of that very soon. Tom and Annalise.